The van build you're gonna see now is what we would call here in Cornwall a proper job. I'm Callan. I'm Megan. And I'm from New Zealand. I'm from the Pacific Northwest. Behind us we have a 2006 Dodge Sprinter that we're going to convert into a mobile tiny home. This is the inside of our van. So nice and clean so far and uh, ready to start installation and framing. Yes! Already packed, we're already sealed. Insulation has been cut and now we just need to finish off the rest of these plywood sheets and then we are good to go. Now that we've got everything pre-drilled, next step for us will be to pull everything off, glue everything down and then bolt it all together. Framing day. It's going to be good fun here today putting up these walls. Luckily I have a, uh, an extra couple of pairs of helping hands. So on the passenger side of the van, we will be having the bed coming along to in front of the wheel wells. And then from then on, we will have a bench. All right, so we have half of the van done, uh, framing wise. We have here the lower studs. This is where our change of direction is to make it nice and simple. We're only gonna have two angles. The upper studs here, this is all the passenger side. On the other side, we have the lower portion done uh, on the driver's side. Now I've left this off because both of these panels here are going to have windows put in them a bit later. Here are all my pre-cut uh, roof timbers. Yes, we have framing timber installed. So first job for us this morning is to figure out a way to get some framing above this door. So today I have some backup. My partner Megan is here and she is starting on the foam insulation. What I've asked her to do first though, is to fill all of these cavities um, that we won't be able to get to with the spray foam later. All right, this side is all finished as far as the packing and the stud work goes. And we are done with all of the framing. We've finished up the ceiling running boards uh, and they actually came out really good. I'm really happy with how they turned out in the end sharp and now fits in the hole which is beautiful because that means that we lose the least amount of height all right as you can see our walls are taking shape in the shower so we have some plywood walls up right now which uh, eventually need to be removed again because we have to put some plumbing and wiring in but very cool to see it starting to take shape we will be putting in a skylight so skylight's gonna go right up in this space here. Also, we'll have a Nautilus sliding door that'll save on some space and also allow us some natural light while we're showering. As you can see, it's a beautiful sunny day in Seattle. So we're gonna take advantage of the good weather and we're gonna install our three solar panels as well as our skylight and our fan. We are taping up the cut line. This gives me something to draw onto and it also stops the jigsaw from scratching the roof. So we have a skylight, you can see it right above the shower. We have a fan, you can see that one right up in there. So our solar panels uh, will feed out their cables, where am I, right here. So they'll come out of these two holes, travel over to the charge controller. From there, charge controller goes down to the two house batteries, which are gonna live in the back of the van, underneath the bed, and then the power will go both to the inverter, which is gonna live right on top of that tire well, and up to the fuse box. How much do you love uh, wiring at the moment? <laughs> so much. All right, it's been a very big day. We have been doing conduit lines for most of the day, so we mapped all of this out yesterday but running the wires through is a totally different game. So that has taken much longer than we thought it would. There is wire everywhere, but it's all in organized chaos currently. So what we're gonna do next is just tape everything nicely 
into position so that we can get things ready for foaming. So we had mail arrive this morning. We have finally received the doors for our gas heating products. We have here a Dometic furnace, 16,000 BTU. Uh, basically means that plenty enough to uh, heat up this small van. We also have a Gerard on-demand tankless uh, gas water heater. Ooh, stressy, stressy. This is the first of our cutout holes on the side of the van. So Megan is now where the water heater is gonna go. Uh, as you can see, we've cut out the two holes in the outside of the van, so that's the most stressful part done. All right, so we're about to put in the framing for the propane uh, water heater and our furnace. Alright, so now that I have pre-drilled all of my holes around my edges, taken everything back off, cleaned all the swarf, made sure everything's touched up and nice, it's now time to finally seal and install all this stuff. ready to go for foaming. Last step now is to put this kind of like plasticky stuff up. And after what seems like a never ending cycle of foam, we are finally done in here. So now all I have to do is take this handsaw, run it down the timbers, and with any luck, we'll have a really nice, smooth, uh, shaved surface of foam. Okay, so we have finished all the foam, finally. Uh, it took a lot longer than what I wanted to, but regardless of that, it is really toasty and warm in here. It is raining outside, uh, but we are all well protected. All right, so our ceiling's almost done. We've got just a couple more panels to put into place. Uh, also fitting in the lights, so you can see, maybe not there, you can see the dangles here. So we've got one light already in place, which is right here. Still needs to be wired together. Uh, also, we need to do the cabinets. So cabinets and walls will be next. Time now to line the walls with uh, plywood first. That's gonna give us something for us to connect all of our cabinetry to. Um, and then we really start kind of building where we're gonna house all of our final fittings, like the stove, the fridge, uh, the sink, and just tying it all together. We are all done with our plywood wall panels. We're in a fully enclosed plywood uh, box. So now I can measure up for all my cabinetry uh, and figure out what's gonna happen next. All right, so I have finished framing up the kitchen now. Uh, as you can see, we've got our sink uh, sitting nicely in position. Now we end up drinking a ton of almond milk, so no doubt, That'll be a good space to store like 10 cartons. Amazing. Also, we had some space above. So I've built another spot where we'll be able to put what looks to be a good place for a cutlery drawer. We have where the fridge is gonna go. So that's gonna be in this one. The stove is gonna go here and that allows us some space underneath. And now we can make a start on the bed. So still working on the bed today. So made some progress. Callan's now sorting out where the water pump's gonna go in relation to our water tank. Uh, while he does that, I'm working on the ceiling today. So uh, we have a lot of screw holes along the uh, ceiling. So I'm filling in all of those with putty, uh, sanding them down, getting them ready to paint. All right, so this is our bed frame. Uh, it probably seems a little bit more complicated than what it actually is, so I thought I'd just kind of break it down, show you the nice and easy parts of it. So, our first box essentially was just as big as what we needed to get our tank in. So if we can hit that before uh, we screw everything off. So moving over to here, I basically just put a wall up against 
and on top of the wheel well. So that covered it, giving us as much space as possible. Now in this little cavity here, which I will eventually drill a hole to fire this wire down, this is where our pump will sit. 450 is the distance between the outside wall and this front part, so that's going to be the width of our seats. This opening here is 600, it's a nice area to walk, but most likely you won't be walking. That'll be where our table goes. Over here is about 650 at the moment. Now we're taking 450 to make this side even to this side. The remainder I will build above and that's what's going to contain our squishy panel with the fold down table and our shelves at the back there where all this wiring is going to. The next box is the batteries. Now they just have a neat little space um, all to themselves. 214 pounds. I believe we have about 240 pounds worth of water when that's full. So when that's full and sitting there on the opposite side, we should be relatively balanced. This will be a drawer. So I can cut uh, a drawer to have a slightly out of square shape and still use most of that. And that'll come in and out, that'll be amazing. This piece is also removable. This will be the bottom of our uh, squishy panel bedding hideaway section. Over in the far corner is gonna be these shelves. So this piece is likely not gonna move. When I then have the last little funky thing underneath, as this piece is not gonna move, I still wanted to be able to access um, this if there was ever a problem. So what we've built here is a couple of bits of timber that just have a little checkout either side. Yes, I have finally completed the beds. So we have our two side opening cabinets. If I uh, sit down on the passenger side, these guys open up. They'll be a bit easier when we chuck some uh, handles on them. Back panel stays fixed. And the opposite side, this is the passenger side. Again, lifts up. Has a really nice spot underneath. So. Uh, we have these on both sides of me now. These are our upper cabinets. Uh, there's a slight difference in size as we go for this one that is above our bed. And this is because as we've got an off center bed in the van, we had some more room. Uh, and that'll be good for storing all of our clothes and stuff. And it's gonna hide our uh, control panel area. So what I'm after doing here is um, just checking my plumbing fittings and making sure that uh, everything that I've got is uh, able to talk to one another and I have the right pieces. Okay, so this is kind of important to see. In the back of the, um, the shower taps, we have got this three quarter inch pipe. But three quarter inch pipe means that the fittings are usually gonna be an inch. So unfortunately, this piece, when it finally comes out, will not match these three quarter inch elbows as they are the same size. So I'm gonna to need to get a one inch drop down elbow. So we'll get those later on the way home. All right, so uh, this ball valve is gonna go um, basically underneath the sink. So it's accessible um, even when we cover over the shower with tile. Um, so that's gonna be good. And then it just allows us to uh, either open or close. And that means if there was ever a problem or a leak, we can just shut that off, still use the rest of the water. I have most of my plumbing done here at the moment. Uh, this is our tank. This guy is a 32 gallon tank, just behind our left uh, wheel well. Uh, so we have our vent uh, inlet, that's how water's gonna go in. And this is gonna connect to a remote fill door that will get put on here um, as soon as that turns up in the mail. Down here we have our outlet, so this is basically our cold water coming in. That fires its way through above the tank there and towards our pump. So currently I was one fitting short, we'll uh, fit that in today. Now this is a silencer kit, it's basically 
a um, pressure resistance flexible tubing that allows this guy to wiggle and shake as it moves and not rattle and cause vibration in amongst the solid PEX piping. So water comes out of our tank, gets pulled out by our pump. This is a strainer, removable, gets rid of any uh, dust or debris that somehow makes its way up through there. And this guy then finds its way along. This comes out and the water then feeds into our uh, on-demand water heater. So the cold continues in and then keeps going. The hot now starts and then that goes on its way out. So that goes through its cabinetry, connects into underneath the sink. So moving over, we then have the hot and cold, which lead up to our connection points for the shower faucet. And just while we're in the shower, that's our power for our vent and our vent pipe. That would be great for the nature's head toilet that we'll put in. Now the gas is coming through the floor. We have two gas pipes coming up from underneath and I will go and do a little quick video under there. So we have put in a remote fill kit for the gas tank and we have the ability to fire gas in and that is the gas bleed. Now this tank kit connects in to our tank which is this kind of ugly beast wrapped in insulation. We are finally getting ready to put all of the, um, the shower room together. Now I have drilled my hole for my outlet and that drops down uh, nice and close to the fuel tank so uh, I've managed to put it in a way where I just have enough space. Now I've started up with what is going to be the framing and inside of these uh, framing bays we are going to have polystyrene insulation and then we're going to put our um, backboard, tile backboard on top of that. We have our shower tray in now. We have got our uh, dropper which is the, uh, the drain that's going down through the floor uh, to the outside and the underneath of the van. All done with the framing and the polystyrene insulation. Uh, next stage for me is to put on the backboard. So Kellen is installing the backboards in the shower. As you can see, shower tray's already in. Okay, so now that we've got the backboards on, and our seam tape on, we're ready for the waterproofing membrane. So I'm gonna paint that on and let it sit for about an hour and then do a second coat. All right, we have another back of board. This one is going behind the stove and the countertop that's above the fridge. Khan's finishing off the other side, so we'll also have some tile next to the sink, which is in this empty space. This side's getting waterproofed. Yeah, so we're gonna waterproof this the same way we had just done to the shower. All right, so today we're working on the sliding door. We've just put in some insulation. So this is kind of soft, squishy insulation. It'll help fit into the corners, all the little crevices of the door. So now that that's all covered up, we are working on getting our plywood cut. This is the door panel that will soon be going on. So I've just been sanding it down. It's this kind of nice tongue and groove look. Okay, we're getting very close. Actually, we're doing it right now. We're putting in the sink today. Alright, so we are on to tiling, which is very exciting. Uh, we chose to tile at home. You might be able to tell we're not at the workshop at the moment because we can't drive the van for a couple days after we tile. Alright, so today is a grounding day. So I've finished one full wall and half of the back wall. Uh, and gonna work on just getting it all done today. Check it out, our shower is done. Well, mostly done. The grouting is done. Still need to put our faucet in. And today my project is to paint the ceiling. So we still just have the raw timber up there. So I'm gonna put a couple layers 
primer and then our final coat of paint. So our windows are ready to go in today. We have relatively, uh, a relatively dry scenario for us to get this sussed. Now I've marked out my openings. Uh, the openings are 1308 by 600. Um, and we've double checked them against the windows. We're installing window number one, the back window. All right, so behind me, we now have our wrapped around windows. Uh, I am almost complete on them. I just need to put in some little corner details. Uh, and then we're all finished. I wonder if we can see, but inside each of these windows is this bar. You can see it a bit better here. This is just a little strip of one eighth of an inch steel, and I've put that around all of the windows in all of the directions. So what that's gonna do is give us our perimeter where we're going to fix our uh, at night. So we're about to cover these with their door panels. So just before all this went down we took the opportunity to just really kind of cover everything, make sure anything that was exposed and scratched before is now being cleaned and tidied up. Uh, nice clean in here you can see this is all going inside the door but nicely covered and painted. And then we've filled in any cavities that we have access to with insulation. So we're on day, what, 50 straight of building? Yeah, 50 days, no rest days in between. Mm. That's been um, highly entertaining. Uh, bunch of cold, bunch of rain, bunch of sickness. Yeah. But we powered through. Behind us, we have kind of, we're putting on the finishing layers now, which is really nice and really good for progress. Hey, so a little update. I've been busy painting. So painting the bed area, basically getting all the cupboards ready. Um, most areas have at least a couple coats of primer and a top coat on, so varnishing will be next. Um, also, I've been working on curtains. So we really wanted to get insulated curtains that would work both as blackout curtains, but then insulation as well, because we're gonna lose a lot of heat out of these windows. So I've made these, which are very handy because they connect with magnets. So these are still unfinished, but we essentially just use these little uh, rectangular bar magnets that fit into these steel bars along the window frames. The last of the build from the timberwork side of things for me is the cabinetry fronts for uh, the kitchen, basically the lower part. Then I'm going to build the doors for the open and closing um, cupboards up top, and also then the drawers. So this right here is a, uh, a stack of unmade drawers. Um, that's basically my plan for this morning and this afternoon. So here are my drawers that we've basically put together. They're ready to go. And all these handles are gonna go up here like so, but inside of the plywood. So in order to do that, I have to route all these out and uh, using a router is a bit crazy if you're trying to freehand it. So the best way to do it is to put it and make some sort of jig. And I've created this kind of picture frame. Um, and then with this and this kind of grid that we all line up, the router can move around within here and it will take out an area of plywood just enough for this. Again, so I'm painting these drawers today. Just spent the last couple days sanding them down and filling in all the holes. Right, oh, I am super stoked to have finally sussed out the furnace. Uh, turned out that the furnace actually needed two 
um, exhaust points rather than one. So unfortunately, uh, I had to change up the design a little bit. Originally, we were just gonna have this one larger vent coming out of the front of our cabinetry. Super nice and straightforward. Everything just came straight from the outside, straight inside, inside good air, outside bad air. Um, and then as it turned out, the uh, instruction manual was wrong and you had to have two. So what we did is we installed a second vent and uh, managed to get enough pieces to work us out just. So we've been working on getting all the cabinets and drawers done. So they are finally all painted and varnished and they have their handles on them, which look lovely. And we have bench tops. All right, so we have got our first side, the cutting station, most likely where I will be sitting and standing during our meal prep time. We have where our oven is located. This is above our fridge, so again, another prep sta station and a uh, nice spot for all our stuff. Third bit of bench space with our uh, sink. And finally, we have our table. So it's nice to finally have this beast in. Can swivel. So it can both turn on itself and on its arm. So on the back of our uh, countertop, the one that has the sink, I wanted to have a bit of an upstand backsplash area. This guy. All right, so this morning's goal is to chuck in a bit of the cabinetry. So Megan has been working really hard on getting all of our uh, upper cabinet doors finished. This is a vent, basically, and it matches nicely with our vent covers for our furnace system. The side rails are now in. These are the supports that will hold on to the drawer slides. So that's these guys over here. They're about to go in next. I am super stoked to get onto one of the last things that we need to do, the last two areas of tiling. grouting um, so this has to sit so we won't drive the van anywhere for a couple days which is just fine because we've got plenty of work to do here and I'm gonna look at this side oh it looks so good uh, we just finished the ceiling which is cool so we've got the lights installed the ceiling fan installed um, everything's been wired so we have to test all of our electric so that'll be fun actually plugging everything in all right so Callan's been uh, wiring up everything underneath the stove side of the van. So having a look down in here, you can see these blue conduits that has all of the wiring that comes out into these switches. So this will control the LED lights and this one's going to be a dimmer control for the overhead lights. So wiring wise, we're making quite a bit of progress. We have uh, most of the wires in. We just had a little bit of filling going up over here. So this final wire can go in. The span, this guy's wired in. Uh, we've got the light that is in the bathroom. That's all done. And now we start working on our power points and our kind of plugs and stuff. So to the left of the van and the bed. I'm gonna have a USB charger port there. So basically all I need to charge there is a phone. Over here at the end of our uh, first uh, cabinetry bench, we have here the thermostat, which is gonna be for our furnace. And then 110. Down below we have our hot water thermostat. And then below that we have our carbon monoxide and CO2 detector. The side, uh, just needing a couple of holes drilled, is going to be our other 110 um, socket. So we got four of them all up in the van. Um, one for me, one for cooking, one underneath here, just going to house the fridge. And then our final one is over 
on what I would say is the master side of the bed. So this is a USB charger for phones and stuff. This is again a 110 volt and this is a whole bunch of wires that will lead to the switch for the light. So I have the main portion of the electrical work uh, completed. What I need to do today is get this, uh, this, this fuse panel wider. We have our inverter. The inverter is attached to our four outlets. The outlets have been wired to normal three prong plugs and plugged in the back. We have the batteries. And so we have uh, basically a fully set up system minus I haven't connected the batteries together here. We have a tap. So this job. Great, this guy's fancy, pulls on down, sprays uh, nice shower water. We have a shower. This guy works also. Let's see if I can do this without getting sprayed. No, that's a lie actually. I have turned off the, uh, the taps underneath there. So we've just gone through and tested that whole system. So it all works. You're gonna have to take my word for it at this uh, at this moment. We have a fridge installed. This guy was actually a bit more difficult than I wanted based on how much room we have. Decent size, a small freezer. So Megan and I don't need too much in the way of frozen goods, but it is available. As you can see, we have some of our lights on. These LED strips are looking especially nice. Keeping the place glowing. We have our solar panels currently working but uh, not very much uh, they are completely covered in snow and we have the tidier version of our fuse panel and this guy which I just installed and I just need to screw back into here is a switch for the pump so we have a cutoff switch for our fuse panel these red and black wires run straight to the battery we have a cutoff switch to our solar panels um, so we can stop charge coming down and we have a cutoff switch in between the batteries and the charge controller. So it's currently uh, what we call snowmageddon in Seattle. We have like half a foot of snow, more than that on the ground. Um, and we're so close to finishing the van. So we, I'll show you inside what we've got done so far. So we have some snow. So we have all of our systems running now. We tested all the electricity, all the propane, so the stove, the furnace, water heater, and all the plumbing. So everything's working. Um, now the last little bits we have to do are just painting, like painting little small spots, uh, filling a couple holes, and it's really just finishing work now. Right, we just hung our curtain today. So this is made out of the same stuff that will be on the windows. So it has the insulated curtain shade on the inside and then this blackout material on the outside. So they're all sewn together and they have magnets in the sides that connect onto these steel bars. So there's one on the door side and then there's one uh, right behind the driver's seat too. So that strip there is also steel. Uh, so we have finally done it. Um, this van is finished, uh, packed and all ready to go. And after, uh, what seems to be too many months, but probably all up four months. Um, five months. Five, <laughs> mu five months if you include the mechanical, uh, and a bit of waiting time. Uh, we are done and we're ready to go. All right, looking at the back of the van. So right now the bed is in couch mode with the table up. As you can see, we've got our two cushions that will go down to make the bed. They're just uh, along the back side of um, the couch at the moment. And our pillows and blankets are all there. We've got cupboards up here. So kind of more bedding and clothes up above. Everything's kind of jam-packed at the moment, so we're still gonna have to figure out a few things in terms of storage. Got our charge controller at 100% because it's beautiful and sunny outside. 
and all of our food in the upper cabinets just above the pair above the stove and sink so really happy with the kitchen there's actually a lot of storage fridge is all loaded up we've got drawers underneath so the drawers this one is let's find out if i can remember got all of our plates and bowls and mugs and on the bottom some more of our kind of cooking equipment so pots and pans our tea kettle and then this one's a bit of cutlery trash bin and some more kind of cooking materials down there on the sink side we have a couple drawers underneath so we're storing all of our towels in this one and at the bottom is kind of a mixture of things it's a deeper drawer quite tall as well so we can fit some of the bigger items down there and cutlery drawer in here and then this one's actually a door so it opens up to all of our almond milks this is our coffee cupboard um, right next to the water heater and shower so shower is equipped with our Dometic toilet so this is a cassette toilet which I think eventually we'll be upgrading to a nature said composting toilet so that's what this is this is all rigged to be able to transform into a composting toilet so this is shower which we haven't yet used very exciting and skylight up above I hope you enjoyed watching that. We're gonna have four different parts coming out which will show you in detail how Callum and Megan built that conversion. Um, just keep an eye out and check out the link below. And if you look around me now, I'm two weeks into this van build and we're gonna be putting out another detailed video about this. So subscribe to the channel for more updates. Hello. <laughs> What'd you do today, Callum? Welcome to Fantasy Island. Hi. You may have seen me from previous renovation shows as how to make a cabinet using 19 easy and difficult steps.